So far, both goods have been infinitely divisible in all our examples. Let's look at an example where we have a discrete good. A good is discrete if it cannot be consumed in any arbitrary quantity. Here is an example. Let's say that good 1 is discrete and that it can only be consumed in integer units, 0, 1, 2, and so on. We use a Cobb-Douglas utility function representing well-behaved preferences, u equal to x1 times x2. p1 is equal to 2, p2 is equal to 1, and m is equal to 5. In this case, we can consume 0, 1, or 2 units of good 1. 3 units of good 1 would cost us 6, so it is not attainable. If we consume 0 units of good 1, then we can spend our entire income on good 2, and we can buy 5 units of good 2. Purchasing 1 unit of good 1 will leave us with a remaining income of 3 to spend on good 2, so 1,3 is a possible bundle. The third possible bundle is 2,1. To figure out which is the optimal bundle in this case, all we have to do is to plug in the bundles into the utility function and find the one that returns the largest utility. The 0,5 bundle will give us 0 units of utility, the 1,3 bundle will give us 3 units of utility, which is larger than the 2 units of utility we get from the 2,1 bundle, so 1,3 is the optimal choice. Here is a graph. The red line is the budget line if both goods were infinitely divisible. Since they are not, only three bundles are available. This one with utility 0, this one with utility 3, and this one with utility 2. Optimal choice with quasi-linear preferences. If the consumer has quasi-linear preferences with indifference curves that are horizontal translates, then her utility function can be written as a quasi-linear function, u is equal to some function v of x1 plus x2. The equation of an indifference curve will be x2 equal to u minus v of x1. So preferences will be strictly convex if and only if v is strictly concave. Remember that v is strictly concave if and only if minus v is strictly convex. In this case, the optimal bundle is unique and an interior optimal bundle must satisfy MRS is equal to minus P1 divided by P2. MRS is particularly simple to calculate for quasi-linear utility functions. MU1 is equal to the derivative of v, v prime x1, and MU2 is equal to 1, so MRS is equal to minus V prime of X1. Set this equal to minus P1 over P2 and solve for X1. We can then find X2 from the budget line. Here is an example. If V of X1 is square root of X1, then since V is strictly concave, preferences are well behaved. MRS is minus the derivative of V, which is minus 1 divided by 2 times square root of X1, and we set this equal to minus P1 over P2. Multiply both sides by minus 2 and square both sides. We then have 1 over X1 is equal to 4P1 squared divided by P2 squared. Invert both sides and we find that the optimal choice for x1 is p2 squared divided by 4 p1 squared, assuming that this quantity is affordable. If it is not, we have a boundary solution where the entire income is spent on good 1. If it is, the remaining income is spent on good 2. Note that optimal consumption of good 1 does not depend on income as soon as we have reached x1 star. An increase in income will only increase our consumption of good too.